of the Holy Spirit. Often today, and maybe some of you might be teaching uh, CCD, grade school, high school, your own children, and might be teaching, well, of course, they were engaged when Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb. Now, this position may seem acceptable on the surface, but then it quickly breaks down. If Mary and Joseph were simply engaged, that is not Mary, but simply engaged when Jesus was conceived, then what kind of example is God giving to us about marriage and family life? We're talking about the Holy Family. We're talking about the perfection other than the Trinity, uncreated grace itself. Other than the Trinity, we're talking about the perfection, the most perfect family, perfection of married life. I mean, if Jesus was conceived outside of wedlock, then wouldn't it seem it's not such a big deal today for persons to continue to do so and encourage others to do the same? As we can already see, there are significant ramifications to a facile understanding that Mary and Joseph are simply engaged. Allow me to explain. Betrothal has to be understood according to the context. Whenever we read scripture, one of the first things we have to do is ask ourselves, what do these words and concepts and practices, what did they mean then before we're too quick to project our own understanding onto them? In Judaism, when you were betrothed to someone, that was the marriage proper. That was the marriage proper. A betrothal was not an engagement. An engagement is a future promise to marry. A betrothal in the time of Jesus is the marriage covenant itself. For example, today in the liturgy, when are two people married? At consent. Consent makes the marriage. Consent is the efficient cause of matrimony. But what about later on when they consummate their marriage? Okay, that, that's something different. But why can they consummate their marriage? Because they're already married. Okay. They're not adding anything to the reality. But in canonical terms, they're strengthening the degree of indissolubility of the bond through consummation. So even today, two people are married at the church. They're not married at the hotel room that evening. It's the consent that is the efficient cause of matrimony. Similarly, when Mary and Joseph became betrothed one to another, that was the formal religious instance in which they were understood to be man and wife. Now, if you now if you consider what we just said, you know, if you remember a little bit early on, a little bit later, when Joseph is having his difficulty. The angel appears to him and says, Joseph, do not fear to take Mary, uh, your wife. Okay? Do not fear to take her. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. But even before this, if we go to verse 18, what I read, read one more time. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man. If you're not married, you don't have a husband. Similarly, and we'll get to this in a few moments, what did Joseph want to do to Mary when he found out about the pregnancy? Divorce her. Well, if you're not married, you don't talk about the language of divorce. Why was a formal divorce needed? Because they had a legally... And remember, in Judaism, you don't have a dichotomy between religion and law. It's all the same. So why did he want to issue her a degree of divorce? So why was he considering that? Well, we'll get to the real yeah. reasons in a minute. But why was he considering giving her a degree of divorce? Because they already had a union. They already, in, a, in other words, they were already married. If you were not married, you don't need a divorce. If you're not married, you don't talk about a husband. And at the time of Jesus, if two people were betrothed and the woman was unfaithful, she would be stoned as an adulteress because it's the same ranking as having been unfaithful in a fully-fledged marriage. So what this means, they were betrothed, but before they lived together, it means they were officially married, but they had not consummated the marriage, which is the only part that would come normally, in, in normal cases, well, in every case but theirs. 
uh, the, the marriage would be consummated, which would happen any time from six months to a, excuse me, a year later after the betrothal. That would be when the bride would be taken into the husband's house, and they would consummate the marriage. So Matthew, in giving us details, not saying they weren't married, is kind of going out of his way to tell us they never had sexual relations. Okay. Do you understand? They were not engaged. So why is it wrong to say they were engaged? Because you're projecting our understanding of steps that lead up to marriage onto a culture that operated religiously and socially at a whole different level. Okay, engagement is not part of marriage. Okay, Mary and Joseph were not engaged. They were truly married. <coughs> now, it is maintained that at the time of Jesus, the age of about 13 was customary for a woman to be uh, betrothed. And the full marriage, in other words, it didn't uh, add anything to the institution, but the consummation would come about a year later. So Mary was probably, and I have to stress, probably, we, have, we don't know by divine revelation, she was probably about 15 when she gave birth to Jesus. And Joseph would have been between 16 and 25. We'll talk about that later. Uh, according to the local customs. Okay. So scripture is clear that Joseph was conceived, sorry, scripture was cle is clear that Jesus was conceived without any sexual cooperation between Mary and Joseph. In this way, the power of the Holy Spirit is clearly shown to be the cause, in the metaphysical sense, of Mary's wonderful pregnancy, thereby preserving her virginity. Now, lest we think about these things and think, well, Joseph then isn't really father of Jesus. Consider it this way as the fathers have. Just as God's fatherhood over us is real, but not biological, so too Joseph had a real fatherhood in relation to Jesus. It wasn't biological, but it was spiritual. Furthermore, St. Augustine reminds us that there are three traditional goods of marriage. Okay? The good of offspring, the good of fidelity, and the good of the sacraments. And the church points out that these three goods were, in fact, fully, most fully, realized by Mary and Joseph. Offspring, because their offspring, albeit by a spiritual and not a natural union, their offspring is Jesus Christ. They witnessed the good of, fide of fidelity because there was no unfaithfulness. And they revealed the beauty of the sacraments because there is no divorce. Keep in mind, in, in, when we talk about the sacramentality of marriage, when we talk about the good of marriage as a sacrament, what it actually refers to theologically, primarily, is its indissolubility. Okay, it's indissolubility. And there is no divorce. Okay, so the Holy Family perfectly embodied the perfection of family life. They perfectly uh, lived up to those three goods of marriage, even though in a way utterly distinct and elevated from the way that we today experience that life. <laughs> Part three, Joseph's dilemma. What type of dilemma was Joseph facing? Okay, what did he want to do with respect to Mary? Divorce her, okay. And we see now it would be a divorce because they're already married, so he would need a, 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 a divorce her. And what, what, what is the motivation behind him wanting to divorce Mary initially? What would be the motivation? I heard it so much. Shame. Shame. I mean, Mary is pregnant, and Joseph clearly had nothing to do with it. Right. Now, let, let me explain why this is a dilemma. First of all, if Joseph suspects Mary of infidelity, I mean, think about it. Joseph didn't get married pregnant. Mary's clearly pregnant. And so if Joseph suspected Mary of infidelity, and he didn't do anything, he would be consenting to the infidelity. Silence would be giving support to infidelity. And yet, if Joseph wanted to um, issue a decree of divorce, Jewish law required two witnesses. So then he would bring scandal because other people would have to know. Other people would have to know that Joseph was not the father. This would bring scandal. That's a problem. And then if Joseph subjected her to the public judgment, as allowed for, not demanded, a lot of scholars think 
Joseph had to uh, do, he 